what's up guys and welcome back to my channel if you don't know me or this is the first time you're seeing my face i am adan i'm a nigerian sewing blogger based in nigeria i do videos on sewing tutorials sewing tips sewing tricks sewing products and fashion business tips so if this is your theme if you love this type of content consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so that whenever i post a video you'll be the very first person to get notified this tutorial is going to be on how to cut a shot in nigeria it is called nika but the right word is shirt so today i'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to cut a shirt the easiest way the simplest way to cut a shirt in no time you guys know i'm about the short and easy life so if you want to find out how to cut a shirt a nika as it's, as it's called in nigeria keep watching and if anywhere in this video you found this content helpful you found it useful don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let's just go into the tutorial let's go so i'm starting on a fold of two on a fold which one is on a fold of two on a fold and from the top of my fabric i marked one inch across the entire length of the fabric now why i marked one inch is because i want to sort of form a curve from the circumference of my waist upwards you see how that turns out so when i was done marking across the entire length of the fabric i connected it with a straight line using my ruler then from that point i marked nine inches downwards and i did this to form my crotch curve and from the center i marked three inches Then I connected the markings with a straight line. So when I was done connecting my markings with my ruler, I sort of had like it like half of a triangle then i drew a curve to form my crouch line so this is how i form my crouch line on a marking of nine by three inches okay so from that point i took the length of my shot now the length of this shot is 19 inches so depending on how long or how short you want yours to turn out um you mark your desired length so i took 19 inches and i did this across the entire length of the fabric and when i was done i connected my markings with a ruler so from the center i marked 1.5 inch and i did this so that i can form the slanted in leg shape we all know that like the shape of the inner part of our shorts or trouser is not exactly straight it's more like slanted so this was what i did to form the slanted line and from that point i marked my hip measurement and my crouch point my hip point and my crouch point now most people take their crouch point at nine inches but i like to take mine at 10 inches so i just mark the hips and i'm mark marking the crouch point now the crouch point is what will help you mark out the circumference of your thigh so this is where i from that point i marked my dart placement at four inches then from that four inch point i sort of drew a slanted line upward and we all know that when you are looking at your trouser or your short towards the waist is a little elevated so this is how i formed that elevated look around the waistline and for it to also merge with the elevated look of the back part of the short so from the crotch uh, my crouch line point i marked my waist this is my my the ma measurement of my waist with an allowance included i also marked my hips with the allowance included as well so for example if your um, hips is 10 you can mark 12 because by the time you fix your zip your zip and you do other things it would have short and you can just draft out your measurement so i also marked the circumference of my tie now the circumference of my tie is 11 so here i marked 
11 and um, 12 inches so i have like one extra inch to play around i think i marked 12 but um 12 and a half inches not exactly 12 inches and um, for the bottom i also marked took same measurement i took for the second first of my tie which is 12 and a half inches then i used my ruler and i connected the lines together Coming back to that waist curve, you can see after we drafted, marked our waist measurement, the curve sort of short. The curve sort of became, um, it wasn't like exactly. So I just went from my dart measurement and marked it back to where my waist point is to make it more elevated because you can see the elevated point we've already drafted it out of our main piece. So you can see I drafted it back in into the measurement so after i was done with that i used my scissors and i just cut out my working piece so this is how you cut the front part of your shirt now i'm going over to the back part it's very easy right i told you so this is what it looks like when you're done cutting the front part and this is my back piece and this is already on a fold of two so all i did here was i just laid my front piece on my back piece like cutting the back is so easy once you get your front measurement right the back is piece of cake so i just um traced it out like so when i got to that crouch curve i notched it with a slit i notched it with a slit Then I went to my main piece and moved it backwards. So from that point where I notched, I marked 2.5 inches for at the top and I marked 1.5 inch at the back. You'll be wondering why I'm putting this measurement into the back piece. This is because of the wideness of the of the bum of your butt and your hips you know the butt is big and wide at the back so you need like an extra allowance to accommodate it so when i was done marking 2.5 inches at the top and 1.5 inch below i connected this with a straight line it's slanted like this is not a straight line but it's sort of you know what i mean so i just connected the mark points together and i laid the piece back at that point where i drew my slanted line then the back part of this um, shirt has a dart so i mark 1.5 inch for the dart placement and i drew a straight line just to connect those two together so i can know where you know the center of the not the center like to get a straight line at that point so when i was done with that i just drew a curved line a curved crouch line and i merged it to that notched point i made at that side you know the notch point i did after i was done cutting the inseam and the in leg yeah so to make sure that your crouch line is equal in the front and in the back you merge it to that point so i marked 2.5 inches for the you know the butt is big and you need like an allowance to accommodate the butt so i marked 2.5 inches but after sewing i realized that 2.5 inches was too much for me so please if you are doing yours i know i, I kind of have a wide butt but if you are doing yours let it be one inch like even me i'm going to make one one inch so my correction here is one inch just make it one inch okay one inch is good enough highest 1.5 inches okay yeah thank you so when i was done doing all the connection and connecting all i did here was i used my scissors and i cut it out you can see how the one inch how i merged the the elevated point at the front and at the back together so you can see how it merged how i use my ruler to connect the points together so that is what you want to do when you are doing the back like i said this place that i added extra 2.5 inches at the center um of the knicker you can add you can do you just do yours for one inch so this is what it looks like this is a zip fly shield i'm going to use that piece for a turnover at the hem of the knicker this is the front part and this is the back part now we're going to go over to sewing the piece So to sew the shirt, I'm just going to start to the front part of my shirt and I'm going to join it at that point. So 
I took it out to my sewing machine and I joined it and this is what it looked like when I was done joining it now it's time to attach the zip and I have a detailed tutorial on how to attach a fly zip for a short for a trouser do check it out in the comment I will, I will leave a link to that video in the description box I just like to show you how I opened it up before I attached the zip so this is what it looked like after I attached the zip you can check the description box for a tutorial on how I attach the zip. So this is just how the zipper looks like. I just wanted to show you how it looks like. In case you don't know how to attach this type of zip, check the description box. A tutorial for that is in the description box. Now, um, this is what the front part looks like. Basically, there's no work in the front part. It's just for you to attach your zip, except for shorts you want to attach it that. So this is the back part and i'm just going to join it on that point i took it over to my sewing machine and i ran stitches across that point so this is what it looks like after being joined together and woven together then i also went ahead to mark my dart placement at four inches as you can see for both sides of the short Then I took the dart over to my sewing machine and I picked my dart and I did this for both sides of the shot as well. Like sewing a shot is very simple. After watching this tutorial here, you become a pro when it comes to sewing shorts. <laughs> so I did this for both parts of the shorts. So this is what it looks like after I had picked my dart and given it a good press. The next thing I did here was I laid the piece on each other. So this is the back part and this is the front part. I laid them on each other and I sort of um, merged the, is it merge? I tried to align the center piece together to make sure that together I secured with a pin because we are going to start this joining first of all by sewing the center piece together so i made sure they were well laid and well lapped and i secured them with my office pin you want to be very careful when you are doing this because any little mistake you end up with a shot that is not even on all sides so when i was done pinning together i'm just going to sew across that axis yeah i'm going to run stitches across that axis so i took it over to my sewing machine and i didn't do from end to end how i sewed it was from the center of the shot i sewed down to one end then i went to the center of the other shot and sewed down to the other end because i found out that if i do end to end by the time i get to the end of the other side it's not even so i just do from the center down to the end of one leg of the shot then to the center down to the other leg down to the other end of the shot so this is how you might want to do yours so this is what it looks like after i was done joining and weaving then i gave it a really good press i gave it a really really good press you want to do this to ensure it's well laid is smooth and is not puffy Then I opened it up and gave it a really good press again. You guys know me and my ironing. Like <laughs> ironing makes the world go round. When it comes to sewing, it makes the world go round. So give yours a good press when you're sewing yours. So when I was done ironing, I aligned the sides together. You know, when I was a beginner, I used to wonder when they attach, then they put the allowance. How do they sew the back and the front when it's not even? Well, this is how you do it. You just align them together. Okay. Align them together and secure with a pin. Then go over to mark your normal measurement. Okay. So that is just what I did here. Like I said, remember the allowance we added in the center for to accommodate the wideness and the height of the butt. I I did two in, two point five inches. I just want to go over this again because I know you might make a mistake. I did two point five inches, but later I realized that two point five inches was too much for me, even though I had I have a wide butt. So next time I'm just going to do one inch. So take the correction and make sure you do yours at one inch. Okay. So this was this is me aligning the shorts together. 
and secured securing with a pin so when i was done with this i just went over to mark out my measurement and i'm just going to join the sides so i've marked out my measurement here and i'm just going to sew it along that axis for both sides of the short So I'm done joining the shorts by the sides, by both sides. The next thing I want to do is to attach the turnover and I'm going to do this on a fold. Now this band here or the turnover strip, I've already added gum stay to it. So I'm just going to fold it into two and attach it to the short. So this is how I marked out my measurement. Now the circumference of my tie is around 11 point, it's around 11 inches, but because this is, is 11 inches, but because this is a free shot, I marked out 11.2 point, <laughs> 11 inches and I did this for both sides of the shot, which means I need two strips. And when I was done with this, to make it even and to give it a really nice fold, I gave it a good press with my steaming iron. So this is how those turn ups you see on shorts. This is how it is made. So I took my time to do a detailed tutorial here because I wanted to skip it. I'm like, I might skip it now and somebody might come to the comment section and ask me. So this is how you prepare the turn up strip. You must attach a gum stay. So this strip already has like gum stay attached to it already. So I gave it a good press. I did this for, for both strips. So after folding it together, you still want to open it up and mark out your desire, the circumference of your tie. So I opened it up again, marked out the circumference of my tie, connected the lines together. I'm going to join it at that point when i'm done joining i'm going to fold it back into its fold so i did this for both part of the strips so this is what it looks like after i was done sewing i'm folding back folding it back into its original shape then i'm going to attach it to the short and how i did this was i just secured it with a pin i made sure that joint point matched with, matched with another joined point in the shot and i just put it inside the shot and i secured with a pin So this is how you align it inside the shorts you don't do it the other way around because this is like a turn up so the hem of the um, turn up is likely going to be outside not inside okay so this is what it looked like when i was done pinning everything together i'm just going to sew across that axis so i just sewed it together and i did this for both sides of the shorts you guys now will not do one leg now how far so i was done sewing and i weaved it so this is what it looks like then the next thing i'm going to do is to top stitch and this is to ensure that the tunnel doesn't puff out or the inner fabric doesn't show up so i'm just going to push my seam that way yeah and i'm going to top stitch along that axis on that point on those points when i'm done i'll give it a good press and turn it over it's that simple <laughs> I watched that so you can see where i'm top stitching i'm not top stitching the turnover strip i'm actually top stitching the main fabric so that it doesn't puff out when i'm done with the turnover and i just did this for both i just did it for both sides of the short and you guys know i like my stitches straight and precise so i actually took my time to do this actually even this even though this is on the fast forward but i took my time so that the stitch doesn't appear clumsy and dirty you know 
so when i was done with the with the top stitching i took it back to my ironing table which is also my sewing table and i gave it a good press so you can see how i'm pushing the fabric inside to make sure it doesn't show up from the turn up and i give it a good press at that point so that is what you want to do when you are sewing your top stitch when you are attaching your turn over or your turn up anyone choose the one you like <laughs> so i did this for both shorts both um, parts of the shirt is it both parts now both legs of the shirt you guys should forgive me this voiceover just forgive me and enjoy the video <laughs> okay so i did this for both legs of the shirt and when i was done with the inner side i just gave the um, turnover a good press to finish it up the next thing i did was i attached my band to my skirt and this is like i don't know this is like the second time i'm doing this type of band band attachment like i'd go for very easy bands especially the days i'm so tired so at the point i got to this tutorial i was quite tired i'm like you know what i'm not in the mood for any exotic bands so i just did like a really small and easy band attachment if you need a tutorial on how to attach a band i think i have two ways or three ways on how to attach a band just let me know i'll do a tutorial on that so after attaching the band to the short i turned it over and i did a top stitch and of course you guys know you want your stitches to be straight because they are going to be seen especially if you are talking your shorts um you're talking your shirt or your blouse into this shirt so you want to make sure these stitches here are straight and you can see how i took my time i kept adjusting to make sure everything is in place while i top stitch so that is what you want to do when you are attaching your band so i just continued like that i got to the end and i did a back stitch to put everything in place and i also gave it a really good press like to finish up your shorts make sure you give your band a really good press to make as in and you know you, you guys know that this this thing helps the band to be well laid to look clean and creeps and not puffy which is the idea not puffy so this is what it looked like ladies and gentlemen if you watched up to this point please give this video a thumbs up please subscribe please subscribe it means a lot to me please subscribe please subscribe and try it i'll try this tutorial let me know how it went tag me on facebook instagram and twitter and i'll see you in my next thanks for watching watch my other videos okay and make sure you subscribe don't go without subscribing thank you